and also of you. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the gospel of Jesus. Grace you, O Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
is on the general election. Consider how politicians feel when polls close. It must be profoundly liberating to get to that point on Thursday. Up until that moment, they must smile until their face is turned. Talk to people they might not be interested in and be endlessly charming. Not all of them, but you know, they're trying. But once the polls close, it's out of their hands. The vote comes in. It's either triumph or defeat. There's no negotiating the outcome being the most powerful. In our lives, much is beyond our control. The reality is especially stark during events like elections. But we can take solace in knowing that just as God has chosen us, he knows what he is about. I often return to a talk that Rowan Williams gave some years ago about vocation. And he challenges this idea that we often have, this idea about God as his playwright. We have this conception sometimes, if God has written the play, he knows how it's all going to plan out, and then he operates a bit like a casting agent. And he says, right, I've got this role, this role, and this role, and I need somebody to fill that role. And he looks around, and he looks at people like you and me, and he thinks, ah, well, with a little bit of adjustment, I reckon they might just be able to fit in that role my part to bring about the plan for the world. Rowan Williams says, God won't work that way. That's not how God operates. You see, what God does is he doesn't start with some great master plan and then try and fit you and me into it. What he does is he starts by creating And he's called me. This is me. He's called me is to be alive. He's called me is to be you. To be Doris. To be Mark. To be Marvel. That's God's call. For you to be the person he created you to be. He's not trying to squeeze you into some kind of role that he's imagined might be great for you and every fiber of your being. What he's doing is he's creating people like you to be you. And if you discover who you are with God, then you will change the world. Think for a moment about St. Peter. It's like this rough and ready fisherman. It's like the most
accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I never want to 